Hello world, Cozzy here with part two of this week's Geek Movie News. Basically there's been so much going on in the world of Geek Movies that I've had to make two separate videos this week. If you haven't seen part one, the link is there. Click out, go back, watch it. Hey, maybe even before you watch this part because you know, there's so much going on, you need to know about it. So part two, we're going to start off with War Games. Now, War Games is getting a, a remake. Um, apparently MGM have set uh, Noah Oppenheim the task of writing the screenplay and the Seth Gordon who's most famously been involved with directing uh, King of Kong he's going to be directing this remake. Now as far as I can see this film does not need to be remade. Uh, I was a fan of it growing up as a kid and I think you know although some of the, the computer graphics might look a bit dated, the, the film itself hasn't aged particularly badly, it's a very very good movie and doesn't need a remake but uh, what can I say, well listen up Hollywood, stop making remakes of every good film ever, it's just not needed, I mean isn't there other things that you can make, can't you buy some original screenplays off people or buy the rights to some novels and adapt them into movies. There must be plenty of other things to do rather than just fall back on remaking movies that have been successful in the past. I'm sick of it. I'm sure a lot of people are as well. You've been warned. Anyway, next up, Dark Tower. Now, Ron Howard and Brian Grazer have been involved in adapting Stephen King's The Dark Tower series into a sort of transmedia event. Uh, they wanted to make three movies with two interlinking TV series between the movies and it was on the table at Universal and now it's not, they've passed on it. Now that isn't the end for this because these two guys, Howard and Grazer, want this to happen. Uh, just to, to give you a quote that from Grazer himself from the New York Post this week He's come out and said that basically they're still looking to get outside financing to make it and distribute it through a major studio. So there's plenty of other major studios other than Universal. They're going to be touting this around those studios. Uh, they're looking for, this is a very original idea, maybe not working with a network for the TV series, but rather distributing it through Netflix. Um, for those of us in the UK, that's basically the Americans version of, of Love Film, um, but apparently it's more stable. Uh, but yeah, so really original idea, not going with a TV network, actually going with an online medium only and then I'm guessing there'll be a DVD release at some point in the future as well. So that's not a definite, it's just something that they're considering. Um, the only problem is this project's going to be put on hold for at least 12 months while both Howard and Grazer work on other projects and come back to it. But yeah, they're gonna, they, they, they want to make this and they want to make it happen, they're looking for someone to basically come in, a studio, a network, Netflix, whoever it is, and help them out with this, and hopefully it does. Uh, also, Javier Bardem is still signed on to star in the three movies and the two TV series, so fingers crossed this happens, but for the next 12 months, don't expect a lot more news about Dark Tower. Next up, a TV series that I am a huge fan of, um, and I know some of you watching this will be as well, and that is J. Michael Straczynski's space opera, you know, opus, you could call it, Babylon 5. Now, Walter Koenig, who most famously was involved in that little TV series from the 60s, what was it called? Star Trek, yeah, uh, he played Bester in Babylon 5 and he was quoted as saying this week that Straczynski is involved in trying to buy back the rights to the franchise from Warner Brothers and develop something new with the rights. Now Straczynski came out very quickly after this and said he's not, he doesn't know where this has come from, he doesn't plan on doing anything new with, with Babylon 5, which to me seems very strange. Uh, why would you swap down something so quickly after someone who was a, a major player, albeit as a recurring character in the series, comes out and mentions it? And why would you do it after last year saying that Warner Brothers had been on the phone to you, asking you to develop something new, which could possibly be that movie you were talking about in 2005 that you were like thinking of making uh, in the Babylon 5 universe? 
So don't really understand why Straczynski's done this. Maybe it's true, maybe he doesn't want to do anything else with Bab 5, despite the fact that fans are desperate for something like a big budget Bab 5 movie. Or maybe it's just cover because he is doing something in the same way he did with the Lost Tales DVD when he said he wouldn't do anything again after the Rangers TV movie and then we got the Lost Tales DVD a few years back so who knows hopefully we're gonna get some more Bab 5 watch this space if I find anything out you guys will be the first to know next up not so much uh, single movie news as Kevin Smith news in general now Kevin Smith has announced that his next movie hit somebody is gonna be his last that he will direct um, and possibly last that he's involved in altogether could walk away from filmmaking altogether. Now, I'm a massive fan of Kevin Smith, a uh, big, big fan of especially his, his early trilogy, the, the New Jersey trilogy, which is uh, Clerks, Mall Rats, and um, Chase and Amy. Um, he, the guy is funny, can be quite vulgar, but yeah, he's he's got a real knack for, for dialogue in particular and, and sort of comedy. So it was a bit upsetting for me to hear this, you know, this could be his last ever movie. Um, I was hoping we are going to get that Clerks animated movie, but who knows, we might do, we might not. Just to tell you a little bit about the film Hit Somebody, it's based on a hit song by Warren Zevon and Mitch Alban. It's about uh, a hockey player, spent his whole career, you know, being that tough tackling, sort of fighting hockey player. And all he really wants to do is, is score a goal. But um, it's going to probably be split into two movies. A big thing in Hollywood at the moment seems to be ending things on a, a, a part one and a part two movie. You know, Twilight, Harry Potter, those type of franchises are doing it. But Smith himself has come out and said that the inspiration for this was not those types of movies. was actually his good friend Quentin Tarantino with Kill Bill. Um, how this will work, I don't know. Two sort of sports comedies, two-parter. Never seen anything like that before. I know I'm a big fan of Smith. I like Smith's movies. I think he could do this and pull it off. We just have to wait and see. Next up, bit of news about the new Underworld film. Now, Underworld Awakening uh, has a new trailer. It's down in that drop down menu under there, go and click out, there's a link to it, go and have a look at it. Um, it looks quite good. I personally haven't seen the Underworld movies, but I'm going to go back and watch the, the first three before this one comes out, because I haven't seen this trailer, I'm intrigued by it, and it, it does look good. Um, you know, vampires versus werewolves, not shiny vampires either. Proper vampires versus werewolves in in a big war. What more could you ask for? Kind of sounds like a World of Darkness setting. I wonder if they've done anything about that. Anyway, I do digress. Uh, so yeah, new trailer for Underworld's out. Go and have a look at it. Next up, a Marvel property that is in development, and I mentioned it quickly last week. That is The Runaways. Now, apparently The Runaways is basically ready to go, the screenplay is finished, Marvel are very impressed with it, they think it is perfect and ready to be made into a full-fledged movie. However, they're holding back on it while they finish everything to do with the Avengers. So we're going to see Marvel really focus on the Avengers, which is great because I want that film to be brilliant, as I'm sure most of you watching this do as well. And while they do that, they're going to hold back on the runaways, but once the Avengers is sorted, is finished, is in cinemas, they're good to go with producing this movie. To, to let you know about it, basically it's about a group of kids whose parents are all very friendly. They meet up you know, once or twice a year. Their parents turn out to be a group of supervillains. And the kids turn out to be mutants with superpowers. So, yeah, they, go, they run away and become uh, a, a group of teenage superheroes battling their own parents. Uh, it's a great concept, it's a fantastic comic book, um, really cheap to buy the actual trades, come in very small books now, go go out and, and buy them or get you know, borrow them off people you know or get them from a library if you can and read them because yeah, they're fantastic. And uh, the film is on its way. Next up another Marvel franchise, that is Blade. Now, 
You know, we, we've seen three Blade movies already, three very good, in my opinion, Blade movies, and Wesley Snipes has been talking to IGN about making a fourth. Uh, he's really interested in making a new Blade movie, and using some of the things that they'd thought about and not got to use in the previous three movies. Now, I would be interested in this, big fan of the franchise, uh, I'm sure a lot of other people will be, but if it's going to get made, you're obviously going to have to wait for Mr. Snipes to get out of prison. Uh, he's in prison in, in the States at the moment on uh, tax evasion charges. So when he gets out, look for more news on Blade 4. If it comes sort of online and I hear about it, you'll be the first people to know. Finally this week, um, a, a final Marvel franchise, and that is Ghost Rider 2 Spirit of Vengeance. Behind me there, that is the new teaser poster for the movie coming next year. Uh, there's also a new trailer for the movie and the link is down there in that little drop down box below. Go and have a look at the trailer. Um, it looks good. I was you know, suitably impressed with it. I, I wasn't a massive fan of the first Ghost Rider movie, although I thought Nick Cage did well in the role. And I'm hoping that this is going to be a better movie. The trailer is good and has got me interested. Go and have a look, see what you think. Maybe leave a comment about what you think about it. But yeah. Ghost Rider 2 is on its way. That's basically all for this week. And for those of you who haven't seen part one of this week's, the link is just there. Click out, go back and watch part one. My Super 8 review link is just there. My Captain America review link is just there. So there's free links for you to click out and watch and view and love and share with your friends. As always with this video, like button's down there, click on that like button because you obviously like this. Subscribe, favourite, send this to all your friends, post it on Facebook, Twitter and all other social networking sites. And until next week guys, au revoir.